have developed very complex ways of generating electricity. In fact, they're almost too good. The 110 volts and 15 amps of electrical power that's available in the average outlet is usually more than is needed for most of our electronic equipment. Try looking inside any electronic device and you will probably find a black box called a power supply. This is not an original source of power. It's a transformer that changes the electrical work that comes out of the wall and turns it into a form that the device can handle. Devices that normally run on batteries often come with adapters that change line voltage and current to the value needed by the device. For example, they can reduce 110 volts in the line to 6 volts for the device. In fact, these adapters turn some of the electricity into heat as a result of the process that reduces it to a safe working level. Like other transformers, electrical transformers transform electrical work into a more useful form. We saw in our work unit that electrical work is done when voltage moves a quantity of electric charge through a circuit. But we don't usually measure coulombs of charge. The flow of charge is most often measured in amperes, which is the current. Voltage times current is actually electrical power. So we will be looking at how an electric transformer changes the values of voltage and current. A transformer can either increase the voltage or the current, but it cannot create more power, so there has to be a trade-off. If a transformer increases voltage, usually called a step-up transformer, the current decreases. The ignition coil on an engine steps up the voltage from 12 volts at the battery to about 20,000 volts at the spark plug. The current, meanwhile, drops to a small fraction of an amp. If the voltage is decreased, the current increases. This is usually called a step-down transformer. An arc welder uses the high current and low voltage of a step-down transformer to do its work. In our unit on energy, we saw half a transformer the inductor coil. An electric current flowing through a coil of wire generates a magnetic field. A transformer has two coils. The input is called the primary. When a current passes through the primary, its magnetic field causes another current to appear in the second coil, called the secondary. This is all an electric transformer is, two coils of wire. An iron core helps make the system more efficient. If the secondary coil has more windings than the primary, like this illustration, it steps up voltage. So the ignition coil has a secondary coil with many more windings than its primary to produce the extremely high voltage, low current spark on the end of the plug. To make a step down transformer, simply reverse the situation. When the primary coil has more windings than the secondary, voltage steps down and current increases. The high current can be used to produce heat for welding. Step up and step down transformers are essentially the same thing. One is just the reverse of the other. Likewise, they have reverse effects on voltage and current. For electricians like Kerry Richardson, transformers help him keep the buses moving. This is an electric trolley bus. It uses 600 volts from the overhead to run it. The 600 volts also has to be converted for use to run the auxiliaries such as the lights, horns, turn indicators, radios, and such as that. The um, overhead voltage is brought down into this converter. The converter runs the 12-volt uh, battery, charges it rather. To do that, the 600 volts has got to be converted down to a usable level. We run it into a switching power supply, which you can hear off it in the background, drive it into this transformer. The transformer has a 50 to 1 turns ratio. 
And that's the actual count, by the way, 50 turns in the primary and one turn in the secondary. The reason we have to do that is because of the high currents involved. Now, the 50 to 1 ratio gives us about 15 volts out, which is converted down to uh, 13 and a half volts for the battery. The 600 volts comes into the, into the converter up here. Now, we can measure the 600 volts in and the, con and the current with these instruments. This is reading about 3.7 amps in and about, oh, 700 volts. The line's a little bit high right now. This is, in turn, is converted through the converter and the, and the transformer down to, well, 12.7 volts. And right now, it's about 50 amps. If you figure the efficiency out, you'll find it to be fairly low. That's because of the light load on the converter and it's just not doing much work right now. Notice how Kerry was concerned with the number of windings in the coils of his transformer. There's a very good reason for that. It tells him the mechanical advantage. Comparing the number of turns on the primary and secondary coils is similar to counting the number of teeth on the input and output wheels in a gear system. If one coil has four times as many windings as the other, there's a mechanical advantage of four. But that only gives the ideal mechanical advantage. We've seen many times that the ideal is not always possible. So if you actually measure the power in and the power out, you'll find the actual mechanical advantage. By carefully selecting the transformer with the right number of windings on the primary and secondary coils, it's possible to transform electrical power into the appropriate form. These transformers step up the voltage from the generating station more than 10 times to overcome the resistance in the transmission lines. Telephone companies do a similar thing on a smaller scale to keep the signal flowing through the lines. It's thanks to electric transformers and their ability to change electric power into so many different forms that enables us to enjoy so many different forms of electronic devices.